What's maybe one thing we can start doing to start to improve our memory? Yeah, so let's um, let's take a specific example. You know, when people come to me and they say they want a better memory, I, it's like somebody going to a coach and saying, I want to be better at sports. You know, like what sports specifically, yeah. right? So let's say it's uh, names and faces. You know, it's it's important, obviously, because if you have any relationship with a person, it's hard to show someone you're going to care for their future, their business, their health, whatever you have, you have to offer them if you don't care enough just to remember them. Remembering people don't care how much you know until they know how much you care. Simple acronym like MOM, you know, the mom. I wrote this chapter in uh, Greece because I found out there was a goddess of memory in ancient Greece and her kids were the nine muses of art, mm. science, and literature. But it's interesting that the mother was, you know, was memory. And so mm. remember mom, it's another acronym. Let's say you want to remember names and faces and you're normally not very good at it, but there was a suitcase, a fictional suitcase of a million dollars cash for you or your favorite charity. If you just remember the name of the next person you meet, how many people listening are going to remember that person's name? Yeah, a whole oh, yeah. lot, right? So it had nothing to do with your capabilities. As well as a memory coach, I'm going to call people on their BS, their belief systems, right? Mm -hmm. And had nothing to do with your capability. It has everything to do with the first M in mom, which is your motivation. So something's very simple, like asking yourself, let's say you want to remember names, just taking a split second before you're introduced. Why do I want to remember this person? Maybe it's to show the person some respect or get a referral, practice these things I learned, you know, on Josh's podcast. Yeah. Because if you can't come up with a reason, you won't get the reward. As reasons reap results. Things have to go from your head to your heart to your hands. Right. If you have a goal in your mind, in your head, but you're not acting with your hands, you're procrastinating. Check the second H, which is your heart, right? Which is a symbol of emotions. And we are emotional creatures. You know, like we're not logical. We're, we're definitely biological. You think about dopamine, oxytocin, serotonin, endorphins. We are this neurotransmitter. We are this chemical feeling soup, right? But we need to have a why and we need to start there. And so just ask yourself why the O in mom stands for observation. A lot of people, they blame their retention when they forget something. And it's not often their retention, it's their attention. Their, the art of memory is the art of attention. Yeah. And so even like a lot of times they're not really listening, they're thinking about what they're going to say, right? So they're not even forgetting their name, they're just not really hearing the name. And if you did this little like mind experiment, think about the word listen and picture it, you know, in the whiteboard of your mind. And if you scramble the letters around, it spells another word perfectly. The word listen, when you scramble the letters, spells the word silent, right? And just being present, you know, you have this incredible supercomputer, 86 billion brain cells, neurons, um, it doesn't come with an owner's manual. It's not user-friendly. It could remember one name, but we're not often because we're not really present. And then the last M in mom, yeah, yeah, you have the the motivation, the observation are the methods. And so something simple to do that everyone could do when they're meeting somebody for the first name is, is take the name and turn it into a simple picture. Because we think in pictures, right? Mm -hmm. When you get on an airplane, no longer does it say fasten your seatbelt or, you know, or some, some, you know, like no smoking, there's a picture, right? And a picture is wow. worth a thousand words. And your visual cortex takes up a lot more real estate in, in, in your brain. And we tend to remember what we see, right? You see a face, you remember the face. You go to someone and say, I remember your face, but I forgot your name. Yeah. You never go to someone and say the opposite. You never go to someone and say, I remember your name, but I forgot your face, right? And there's a, there's a proverb that says, what I hear, I forget. What I see, I remember. And what I do, I understand. What yeah. I hear, I forget. I heard the name, I forgot it. What I see, I remember. I saw the face, I remember it. And what you do going through the power of practice, you really understand by doing. And so if you tend to remember what you see, my tip would be try seeing what you want to remember. So you meet somebody named Mike, and for a split second, imagine them jumping on the table and singing karaoke on a microphone. And it sounds so childish, but who are the fastest learners, right? Children. Yeah. And they use their imagination. They use emotion. You meet someone named Carol and imagine for a split second, they just, they just bust into Christmas carols, right? And, That's you know, right. a person named is Mary. I imagine them carrying two lambs for Mary had a little lamb or there. I imagine them in a wedding dress. Someone's name happens to be Mark. I imagine myself grabbing a Sharpie marker and putting a check mark on their forehead. And even when it doesn't work, Josh, it still works because it gets you to focus on the person and it gets you to focus on the name. Yeah. You know, th this simple technique is something that 
overcomes what I call the six second syndrome. Somebody tells you something or you read something and you have six seconds to do something with that info. Or once a handshake breaks, the name is, it just disappears into the ether. Mm. And it's a means to an end because once you know the person's name happens to be Mark, then, you know, then, then the picture disappears. But when you're saying goodbye 30 minutes later, you remember, oh, who was this person? We put a check mark on his forehead. What's his name? Mark, right? So it's just a kind of little memory hack that, that helps, that uh, goes a long way. That's so good. You know, one of the things I'd love to ask you about is, and I know you've done some, some research on this and read some studies. What are mm -hmm. some of the best herbs, vitamins, supplements, foods, things that people can do to optimize their neurological health and memory and focus. Do you want to be able to remember confidently the information that you hear on this podcast? Do you want to improve your memory to easily and confidently be able to remember names and faces, client information, give a speech without notes, learn another language, remember what you read, and so much more? There's a solution, and I call it your quick recall. In just 15 minutes a day, for 30 days, I've designed the ultimate course, how to unlock your quick recall. Just go to quickbrain.com forward slash recall. Enter podcast 15 for your immediate discount as a thank you for listening to our show. Yeah. So there, I mentioned there are, 10, there are 10 levers that really can move the needle for that two thirds um, to improve your brain health and performance. Uh, one of them is a good brain diet. So there's a whole area of science called neuronutrition. And your brain is only 2% of your body mass, but it actually requires 20% of the, of the nutrients, the energy. It's an energy hog, right? And while your brain is part of your body, it also requires uh, different nutrients than the rest of your body. And I always prefer people get it from, from foods, you know, good whole foods, uh, local, organic, as best, best as clean as you could do. Um, but if we don't get it from our diet, then you, you, you could supplement it, with, you know, obviously also as well. So some of my favorite brain foods, and I'll show people how to remember it. Have you ever gone to the, the like the store, the market, and you went, you go to buy like one thing, and you come back with maybe a bag or two, and when you're home, you realize that you forgot that one thing. Uh, yeah, yeah, of course. Yeah. yeah so times. this would be a good memory exercise. One of my beliefs is that there's no such thing as a good or bad memory. There's a trained memory and an untrained memory. Right. And we need to exercise our memory. So it's a wonderful opportunity to take the stairs, right? To do the, the mental calisthenics, yeah. to memorize a list. So, um, I'll give everyone like 10 of my favorite brain foods and then we could talk about supplements. And just to remember it, there, I mentioned <laughs> I wrote the memory chapter in Greece. There's a ancient memory technique, 2,500 years old, where they would remember like orders remember their speeches or poetry based on placing information around uh, locations they're very familiar with, like their home, right? And mm -hmm. people could do this in their home, in their office, their school, the local mall. And you, you're taking like 10 places that you're very familiar with and putting the 10 things you want to remember in those places using your imagination and emotion. So for example, um, maybe everyone could do this. You could do this with me. Yeah. So everyone uh, touch the top of your head right now and say top. Oh. And that's your verbal memory top. And we're going to just take 10 places on your body. Uh, second place is your nose. So you say nose, nose for your verbal memory. Third place, just going down your face, mouth. Fourth, nose. let's go to the side. Touch everyone listening, go touch your ears, yes. your ears. And five is your throat. All right. So we're exercising our memory, even doing this. So we're not just hearing about it. We're doing it. Uh, six are your shoulders. Everyone touch your shoulders and say shoulders. Shoulders. Seven is your collarbone, your collar. Collar. Eight, just wiggle your fingers. If you're not watching this on video, I'm just wiggling my fingers. Eight is fingers. Nine is your belly. And then let's say 10 is your bottom. All right, so that's 10 places. And now what we're going to do is I'm going to share with you 10 of my favorite foods to, to boost your brain health. Um, the, the first, and we're going to put it in those 10 places, are avocados. Right. The monounsaturated fats, good for the brain. Your brain's mostly fat. So just imagine avocados using it as a hair or scalp conditioner. You're mm -hmm. putting guacamole on your head and it would never happen. Right. But because you could not just hear it, you could see it and kind of feel it. It becomes, you're using more of your, your, your mm -hmm. nervous system to memorize it. And just very quickly, a second place is your nose. Right. And the second brain food are uh, blueberries. Berries are, are incredibly neuroprotective, right? Um, high in antioxidants. So imagine, I call them brain berries, but imagine blueberries coming out of your nose. What does that smell like? Use all your senses. What does that feel like? If you ever saw somebody and their blueberries were coming out of the nose, you would never forget that. The yeah. third place on your body, everyone, was your mouth. 
And um, I like broccoli as a brain food. You know, imagine broccoli stuck in your teeth. Now everyone's bio individual has different food sensitivities, and, and and so keep that you know in in mind. You can do a microbiome tests and a nutrient profile. But imagine a big stalk of broccoli stuck in your teeth. Right, the sulforaphane is is good for, uh, especially when it's sprouted, is is, is good for cognitive health. Yeah. Um, so you taste the broccoli in your teeth. All right, all right. The fourth place was our ears. So everyone touch your ears. Uh, fourth brain food, olive oil. So just imagine you're cleaning your ears with olive oil or you have olive earrings, right? There's limitless examples. Just And if you can't imagine it, just imagine you can imagine it, all right? Five was your throat and um, eggs. If your diet allows the choline in eggs, precursor to acetylcholine, which is good for cognitive health, imagine a hard boiled egg in your throat, mm. all right? It's just kind of stuck there. Six are your shoulders, uh, I'm a fan of green leafy vegetables. And again, uh, some people can't di- readily digest it as easily, but just imagine shoulder pads made out of um, kale and spinach. You have to look, look to your left and look to your right. You have shoulder pads made of kale and spinach. All right, seven is your collar. And uh, let's talk about salmon or sardines, right? The, 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 the fatty fishes that are high in omega-3s, your, your DHAs, maybe wild caught salmon. Maybe you have a necklace made out of salmon sushi. And maybe make it like a week old. <laughs> so you really, you really use more of your sense. What does that smell like? What does that feel like? Imagine a necklace made out of salmon sushi. All right, we're almost done. Uh, eighth place are your fingers. So we go to your fingers. Uh, eighth brain food, turmeric. And so just imagine that golden powder all over your fingers. You just can't get rid of it. It's all over your, your, your fingernails, your cuticles. The curcumin is, is uh, the, the active ingredient in turmeric. It can be anti, very anti-inflammatory. Uh, nine is your belly. A uh, good snack food that I love are walnuts. So imagine eating walnuts out of your belly button. Walnuts are high in vitamin E, neuroprotective, but you know, walnuts coming out of your belly button, you're eating them, something silly like that. And then finally, the 10th place is your bottom. Everyone touch your bottom. And 10th uh, brain food, dark chocolate. Mm. Um, I don't even need to hear what people are saying or <laughs> seeing back there. Um, but dark chocolate, not milk chocolate. Um, generally, what's good for your mood tends to be good for your mind. Yeah. So now, uh, so imagine we're going to have a limitless like brain cocktail party. Josh calls you up and says, hey, while you're out, can you just stop by the market, the uh, health food store, and just pick up these 10 quick things? And you're like, oh, I'm driving. I can't write it down. Or you're in the shower. Or can't, you can never, even you have these ideas, you can never mm-hmm. write them down, right? I don't know why you pick up the phone in the shower. But um, now you just walk in the aisles and you just, you have your grocery list because it's on your body. So on top of your head, you have the first brain food, which is, which is what? The, the avocados. I, right? I, I, I want to prove that I can do this now quick, Jim, because okay. this, this yeah, is yeah, amazing. Yeah. I mean, we've, you know, this was, yeah, this was, this is fantastic. So we've got avocados here. I, I remember that because that, that's what we're, you know, scrubbing into our head. I know we've got. Uh, we've got no, we're going to the nose, so we got blueberries. I imagine blueberries coming out of the nose. We got mouth because broccoli is stuck in your teeth. We got olives. I remember that because actually there's a lot of remedies yeah. that I have people do with olive oil and garlic nice. oil. And that sort of thing is the base. And then we're going down to Here's the throat, uh, throat um, and that's where an egg is caught, you know, mm-hmm. uh, in the throat. Uh, the next is the uh, the shoulder pads of, we talked about kale and spinach, the greens there. We talked about the collar, which was salmon. Yeah. <laughs> that had been there. Pretty and good. Then, yeah. And then we went down to the hands. We talked about turmeric. By the way, I've had this happen plenty of times. I use turmeric a lot. So okay. I've had the orange or yellow stain of that curcuma <laughs> on my hands. The next we have belly on button, belly. which is walnut. We talked about there, right? In the, and then we talked about the the butt, the glutes there, the behind for uh, for dark chocolate. So, I mean, this That's is amazing. amazing. I mean, it really is uh, such a great yeah. tool to, to learn fast. Thanks and people could use this anywhere. They could use their body list every day and reuse it. Um, they could you could use their home and go in the kitchen and say, okay, and the microwave is the first place. The stovetop is the second. Refrigerator, just go clockwise. The refrigerator is my third place. The so dishwasher is the fourth and the sink is the fifth. Wow, and people good. could use this to even um, memorize a speech. I, I work with a lot of actors or TED speakers and teaching them the key points. Uh, and a lot of people have a fear of public speaking where that fear stems from is like, I'm going to forget what I'm going to, I have to say, or somebody's asked me a question, I'm going to go answer it. And I'm not going to remember where I was, but here you just walk around your home or your office or the mall and you can make these, 
you know, you're, there's no limit to the amount of locations you could use. And just using this principle of PI, P-I-E, you have a P stands for place, map out your places. The I is imagine, imagine what you want to remember as a picture, because we'll remember it better, like with faces. And then the E is entwine. Entwine is just, you're putting the two things together. Mm. And what are you putting together? You're putting that image with the place. And uh, yeah, that's a wonderful shortcut because most people, what's the alternative? They would have to repeat it over and over and over again, yeah. right? And that takes a lot of time and, and it's pretty boring, you know? And so, yeah, that's it's just one key to be able to do 